Hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, I2B2 Transmart Foundation Community Meeting for May uh, 2017. As usual, we will be recording the call, uh, the meeting, and the slide deck, and also the recording will be available on our website shortly. Uh, the recording will also be on the Transmart Foundation YouTube channel. The agenda today, uh, we're going to first talk about the new I2B2 Transmart Foundation. Uh, Keith Elliston will uh, go through uh, a set of uh, de a slide deck to describe the organization and function of the new foundation. Uh, and we'll end at the end with a little bit of information on the uh, our activities at BioIT World next week, and then also the I2B2 Transmart Foundation Symposium uh, at Harvard Medical School. So we'll now switch over to Keith. Um, Am I on? Yep. Yep. There you go. You should be fine. Uh, no. There you I, are. I think we're we're doing we're, we're doing the same thing. Unmuting. You're all set. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks, Rudy. And uh, no, I'm I'm very happy and, and pleased to be able to say that uh, uh, we've uh, successfully uh, worked on. Uh, on merging the I2B2 and Transmart Foundations. And uh, so what I want to talk to you about today a little bit about is, is what that means. Um, in essence, uh, everything that we've been doing, we'll continue doing, uh, and we'll be doing even more, uh, working closely with uh, with the I2B2 group and expanding uh, the overall uh, purview and mission of the foundation. I get the first slide, Rudy? So, uh, you know, I think we, as we've talked about in the, in the Transmart world, uh, we understand translational research and the, and the space that we've been working in. Uh, hit the button, Rudy. Um, uh, the key thing has been for us is to, to use translational research to improve outcomes for patients. Uh, on the I2B2 side of the world, it's really been the focus uh, on healthcare uh, and using uh, healthcare uh, and clinical research to improve outcomes for patients. And what we're doing by merging the two foundations is really bringing together and unifying uh, two highly related and, and you know, derivative platforms, Transmart have been, having been derived from I2B2, uh, to, to unite uh, the translational mission and the healthcare mission into a, a precision, united precision uh, medicine uh, vision. And uh, Rudy, if you can just move it along. Um, I think the, the key goal and focus uh, for the foundation is, is enhancing that translational research mission to a full precision medicine uh, effort. Next slide. I think my iPad updates slowly. Rudy, did you get the next slide? Well, yeah, my iPad is definitely slow. I apologize. I'm here uh, at the eTrix um, uh, Biotrans R meeting, and so the network may not be the best either. Um, it's as I go through it, here, let me, yeah. is it okay? Yeah. It's okay. changed on my screen. So. It's changed on my screen, so I'm good. Great. So uh, the, the key thing that, that uh, we bring into the Transmart Foundation with ITB2 is this focus uh, on healthcare. And ITB2 uh, has uh, a ready install base. It's installed at uh, over 200 hospitals and academic medical centers and providers. Um, by our best estimates, uh, there are over 250 million patients whose data are stored and used in ITB2. Uh, and there is uh, an advanced network of people using ITB2 in clinical research. Uh, there's also been a growing base of groups that have been using ITB2 and Transmart, uh, both in the same institution. And uh, as Paula Biak has shown, is bringing ITB2 and Transmart uh, together um, into a single uh, environment and using that with, uh, with common data. Uh, provides a number of really synergistic opportunities. And so our goal with bringing ITB2 and Transmart together in the foundation is to keep ITB2 moving forward, to keep Transmart moving forward, and to create new opportunities for linking ITB2 and Transmart together, both from a technological perspective uh, as well as a sociological perspective. Next slide. Uh, I think we, we all know uh, the key role for Transmart and what Transmart is, so I'll, I'll rush right past that. Uh, and wait for the slide to change. Um, but again, I think the, the key thing that we see is the opportunity is that uh, this is really a one plus one equals three or even a one plus one equals four type of, type of situation uh, where bringing the clinical research community together with the translational research community together 
uh, it really provides a number of new opportunities. It provides new opportunities uh, for data integration, new opportunities for technology development, uh, uh, brings a critical mass of, of research effort together on the two platforms, uh, and creates new opportunities uh, within the research community and, and even to, to spurn additional, uh, uh, spawn additional commercial development and, and opportunities there. Next slide. Okay, um, so the ITB2 Transmart Foundation, let me tell you a little bit about this. And again, uh, the Transmart Foundation, uh, everything that you've known and love about the foundation will, will continue. Uh, and we are expanding that mission in, in a number of different ways, which I'll, I'll go through for you. Uh, number one, uh, the first thing about this, what the foundation does is it manages code governance. Uh, we've had the project management committee uh, for the Transmart platform. Uh, we're now enhancing that and, and adding uh, a project management committee for the I2B2 platform. Uh, we'll be building uh, also an I2B2 Transmart platform for the open source code base for I2B2 Transmart uh, that Paula Biak has, has uh, led the development of. Um, and we'll develop new open source uh, projects that fit the foundation mission. Uh, currently, we, we are building a project management committee for the Open Bell uh, community, and we're working towards that. And we have a number of other communities that we're working on, uh, uh, on bringing in as well. So I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity here uh, to, to bring a number of open source platforms together that enable this unified vision of precision medicine and the key technologies and capabilities that help us to realize that. Uh, the next thing is we see us really focusing on developing uh, in the space uh, of precision medicine and learning healthcare. Uh, I think by linking together the academic medical centers with the biotech, pharma, academic, uh, and industrial groups, uh, that we create uh, a, a seamless um, integration of, of these efforts across the space, all the way from, as in the I2B2, as it said, is, is going from the bench to the bedside. And that bench for us is all the way back into drug discovery and all the way forward to, to the patient. Uh, another thing the foundation will continue to do is collect and distribute open data. Uh, we think that sharing data and working with data in ways that enable people to do new research and reusing these data uh, is, is what really is going to generate a lot of the advances in precision healthcare. Uh, we can also work towards uh, attracting new resources uh, to contribute to these platforms, uh, in-kind contributions, grants, philanthropy, sponsored projects like our 17-1 project, uh, et cetera. And again, by having a greater critical mass and a greater scope, our ability to attract these projects is improved. Um, we will continue to bring commu the community together for events. Uh, if you're in town uh, for BioIT World next week, uh, we will be having a community meeting, we'll be exhibiting, we have a number of things that Rudy will take you through. Uh, and we also provide a, a marketing capability for the platforms, as we have, is to bring, raise awareness uh, of ITB2, of Transmart, and of the other projects that we're, we're shepherding and bringing forward. Next slide. Uh, just here graphically, uh, we kind of lay out the, the tran Transmart, ITB2 Transmart Foundation mission which is really about bringing uh, these groups together for precision medicine. Uh, the community focus will be the same, focusing on open source, uh, open data, uh, and open science uh, through our uh, 3C committees. And uh, we're really focusing on collaboration as one of the key elements of this. And in the open data, or the open source space, uh, the project management committees are the key activities in the open source uh, area. Uh, the platform space, I'll take you through in a bit, but our goal is to bring together a collection of technologies and platforms and content uh, to enable people to do the data science that will drive precision healthcare. Next slide. Um, if we look at the, at the new vision and mission statements for the ITB2 Transmart Foundation, You'll see that they're very similar uh, to the Transmart uh, Foundation mission, but they've been expanded. Uh, and that is, uh, rather than focusing on uh, translational research, um, our goal here is to realize the promise of precision medicine. Uh, and the foundation uh, does this by enabling effective collaboration through sharing, integration, standardization, standardization and analysis of heterogeneous data from healthcare and research, uh, and through engagement and mobilization of a life sciences focused open source open data community. Uh, these are the key uh, visions and mission statements uh, that, that uh, I think really direct us and guide us as a community and as a foundation 
uh, that lead us to the direction that we want to go in terms of, of enabling this precision healthcare space. Next slide. I should have memorized the slides. I could start while they're, while they're rotating. Um, uh, the goal of, of bringing the I2B2 and Transmart foundations together uh, are really uh, built around two key elements. One is, is to create the best-in-class open source ecosystem for precision medicine. Uh, we believe that by spanning uh, this entire space and adding new technologies and capabilities here, uh, that we can create uh, a platform that could not be created, in fact, any other way. Uh, I think open source is the only way to build platforms that can span this type of space uh, and that can integrate uh, most effectively. Uh, and so this is one of our key goals and objectives. We think that uh, this is an approach that can only be achieved successfully through an open source approach. And secondly, it's to build critical mass. Uh, I think one of the key things in the research sciences is that uh, critical mass is an incredibly important thing to, to achieve and is often uh, the failure point of many efforts. Uh, by bringing together what is an almost a completely distinct clinical research community and translational research community, uh, we in essence double the size of, of the community and we can bring together these groups uh, in a way that I think can really be beneficial uh, to, this, to the community overall. Uh, and that community you know, spans hospitals, uh, clinics, uh, physicians, uh, as well as, as translational scientists, clinical researchers, uh, and drug discovery scientists. It also increases the amount of data that's available. We see the, the 250 million patients worth of real world evidence that lives uh, in I2B2 across the community as being uh, uh, a resource that is ripe for collaboration and for doing the scientific research. We think that the, uh, the capabilities of the Transmart platform with its advanced statistics and, and other uh, and analytical capabilities will really enhance what we can do uh, with the clinical data in I2B2. Uh, we also increase the number of institutions and users that are using the platforms. Uh, today, over half of the, uh, uh, of the CTSAs uh, funded by NIH use both I2B2 and Transmart, uh, and it increases the number of vendors supporting the platform. We also think it improves the opportunities for funding and support for these efforts. Uh, so we really do believe that these are very synergistic approaches uh, and that they, they work together very effectively within the foundation, uh, as well as technologically. Next slide. Uh, if we look at the at the ecosystem, just from a, a technical perspective, uh, we 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 see that the central organizing feature that brings all of these things together is the I2B2 data model. Uh, Transmart adopted the I2B2 data model uh, when it was first developed as a, a code base back in uh, in late 2000, uh, it's 2008 2009, um, and it has enhanced that and worked within the data model by adding uh, capabilities for. Uh, full, full genome variants, uh, for uh, RNA-seq, for uh, microarrays, and, and more. And so by uh, keeping that data model intact, we've created this opportunity uh, to have this sharing and capability amongst the platforms. So both Transmart and I2B2 work with that same data model. In fact, they can work on the same database, uh, and we can enhance the connectivity between these platforms. Um, so that's one of the key features and, and advantages of our space. Uh, but we also see a lot of integration with additional tools. I2B2 has great integration with uh, EHR, EHR systems, uh, electronic healthcare, electronic medical records, um, has built-in federation with SMART and, and Shrine, uh, as well as additional uh, compliance elements uh, with the Hive approach there. Uh, well, Transmart has uh, great connectivity to platforms like R and SAS, uh, built-in tools that work together well with these things. You can readily export data to uh, uh, MathWorks and, and other platforms. Uh, with the 17.1, which we've heard about quite a bit, we have an integration with Arbatos, which brings a, a scalable compute and federated uh, data sharing infrastructure uh, to the platform. Uh, and, and we can continue this advancement of integration of key open source technologies that allow us to create a platform that spans the needs of the entire community, uh, but also uh, can be achieved because of the ability to integrate open source software. Uh, so I think this is, a, is really a key advantage here, and it's one that as we continue to build out this space, uh, we'll look for, for other open source projects to work with uh, and to integrate into this overall uh, scheme of things. Next slide. Uh, 
Uh, I think a, a, good, uh, a good example uh, of some of these key advantages, uh, uh, we've recently gotten a number of questions. In fact, here at the uh, BioTrans R meeting, uh, I've had a number of conversations on uh, OMOP and the common data model on how that works with I2B2 and Transmart. Uh, it just so happens that uh, uh, OMOP and CDM have been incorporated into I2B2. Uh, there is a, a new version uh, that's in the works. This is the poster that was presented this last year at AMIA. Uh, but it really creates an opportunity to bring these kinds of advancements and capabilities that are coming into I2B to, to more readily bring those to Transmart and to do deeper integration and enabling of sharing. I think one of the things we talked about today at the conference is how uh, by using common semantic models and common data standards, uh, we enable the ability to share data amongst multiple distributed sites. And I think these are the kinds of things that we see getting much more involved in and enabling uh, through the efforts here. Next slide. Um, so overall, the, the, the key benefits to the community uh, for bringing I2B2 Foundation and Transmart Foundation together um, is this enhancement of critical mass, which I think is a key component for success. A unified strategy for the, plat the platforms and the ecosystem. Uh, we can generate uh, a seamless environment that goes from patient care all the way back to the research bench and back again uh, and unite uh, two very strong brands in their respective communities, I2B2 and Transmart, into a strong single brand to unite the community. Uh, there's a long history of, of both platforms uh, in terms of their support from grant funding, uh, from corporate uh, funding, from adoption that I think it really come together nicely in this. And I think we create a number of, of new opportunities for collaboration, uh, for innovation, uh, and for funding. Let me tell you a little bit about the foundation. You'll find that uh, the, the changes that we're making are, are, are very minor with respect to structure. Um, we are making, uh, the, say, the, the largest change is moving from uh, a membership program that was driven by uh, corporate influence. Uh, where members uh, paid uh, to become uh, members of the foundation and then participated in the overall governance at the board level uh, to one that is driven by individual stakeholders uh, on a meritocracy base uh, which follows the, the model that Apache Software Foundation has pioneered in this field. And what we've moved is from the corporate sponsorship from a, a membership effort where we're participating directly in governance uh, to a partnership where we're participating in a collaborative way. And as a part of this, we are uh, instantiating a business advisory board. A business advisory board uh, will be uh, that activity where uh, partners who contribute to the sustainability of the foundation and the sustainability of our platforms uh, can get together and work with the board members of the foundation work with the leadership team of the foundation, work with the chairs of the project management committee uh, to, to provide that advice uh, and capability and not be encumbered by the fiduciary responsibilities of a nonprofit board member, uh, which are really to, to, oh, the, to provide their loyalty to the nonprofit versus their own corporate interest. And so this really provides, I think, the ability for the people on the business advisory board uh, to represent their interests of their, their uh, their constituents, uh, their sponsors, and to ensure that those voices are heard and to, to participate uh, in things uh, from that perspective. So the Business Advisory Board is, uh, is, is a key new addition here. Uh, the membership program uh, is individual stakeholders that over the course of the next few weeks will be individually invited to seed uh, the members of the community uh, and a new board of directors. Uh, the project management committees are all be chaired uh, by a member, uh, and so the initial project management committees are the Transmart Foundation or the Transmart uh, PMC, which is chaired by Rudy. Uh, we'll be starting the I2B2 PMC, which will be chaired by Sean Murphy. Uh, we'll be starting the I2B2 Transmart, uh, the integration platform, uh, chaired by Paula Diak, uh, and uh, we'll be starting up and getting rolling the Open Bell PMC as well. Uh, so those will be uh, getting up and running. Uh, and also we'll be rolling out uh, to all of the, the, the previous members of the foundation, the partners program, uh, giving you updates and key input on that. And, and I'll tell you a little bit about that in a second. Next slide. So uh, from a governance perspective, uh, the key thing that, uh, uh, that's a little bit new is that we have a, a set board of 11 directors 
Uh, we have the, the same three committees that we've had previously, the executive committee uh, that will meet with the, uh, the executive leadership team on a monthly basis. Uh, we have the governance committee, which will oversee the membership elections, board nominations, board elections, uh, and any issues with bylaws and, and other policies. And our finance audit committee that will work on the budget and uh, on ensuring that, that the nonprofit uh, follows all the basic rules and, and needs it does, uh, has to follow as a public charity. Um, in terms of the members, uh, we are seeding the members group with uh, 50 stakeholders, 25 coming from the I2B2 community, 25 coming from the Transmark community. Uh, and that group will nominate and elect uh, board members on an annual basis. Uh, each board member will have a, uh, uh, a two-year term uh, and will have a staggered set of terms. So uh, essentially half the board members will be elected each year. Uh, and uh, the members group will nominate and elect new members. And the goal here is to have a group of individual stakeholders that can provide you know, key governance oversight for the foundation and its activities, and that will grow and represent the active community uh, as it grows and, and, and builds itself. So as I said, the, the membership model follows uh, that that's been established by the Apache Software Foundation. Uh, we work directly with ASF members on this uh, and also directly with legal counsel that is, has worked with ASF on this model. Uh, we think this is a really good model uh, for the foundation. Um, it is, uh, it's, it's in essence establishes a meritocracy of stakeholders uh, that represent uh, not, not corporate interests per se, but, but individual interests and can ensure that, that the the foundation uh, is true to that mission and model. Uh, foundation members will be elected for life, um, but the key thing is, is if they become inactive uh, or if they, they don't fit in that membership space, uh, they can uh, become emeritus members. Emeritus members re remain uh, members of the foundation, uh, but are, do not vote on, on various activities in terms of board members and, and other aspects. So uh, this is a key thing for us, and it's a very important aspect of, of becoming a member. Uh, and I think it's one where uh, we want people to, to really see this as a, an opportunity to uh, help fashion and guide the foundation as a reflection of the community. Members will meet once annually. Uh, it will be updated by the board and management team and all the key activities of the foundation. Uh, and uh, there will be an election of, of new members and new board members. This will take place uh, every year at our uh, foundation annual meeting. Uh, this year that meeting will be in London this fall. Um, but overall, uh, this will be something where you, you don't necessarily have to be present to uh, participate, um, but you, you have to participate to continue your active membership. Uh, new members are nominated by existing members, uh, and they can be elected by the foundation members at their annual meeting. Uh, so membership uh, should be based solely uh, upon merit and contribution, uh, not based upon uh, uh, financial remuneration or, or other kinds of sponsorship. And the goal here is to really have, have the key thought leaders, stakeholders, and contributors to the community and foundation uh, representing and guiding the foundation overall. Uh, the new Transmart Foundation uh, Board of Directors uh, is one that we built by combining uh, key members of the boards from both foundations. Uh, coming from the I2B2 Foundation, uh, Zach Gahane, who's been the chair of the I2B2 Foundation, will join us as co-chair. Uh, Sean Murphy, uh, Paula Viak, and, and Russ Waitman uh, will also join us from the I2B2 Foundation Board. Uh, from the, the existing or previous Transmart Foundation Board, uh, Gil Oman uh, will join as co-chair, our uh, chairman of the Transmart Foundation, and he'll be joined by the heads of the three uh, committees uh, as well. So Matteo Di Tommaso uh, from, from the uh, uh, Governance Committee, uh, Brett Davis from the Finance Committee, and Jim Serum, who ran the uh, Strategy Committee, uh, where the recommendation to merge the two foundations came from. Uh, and finally, we've invited a number of independent directors uh, to this as well to help seed this, and we've looked to people that are very active in the community. Uh, our goal has been to build in some representation for Europe. Uh, so Christelle Danielle uh, from France will join us, uh, and uh, to increase the, the gender diversity and views of the board as well, uh, and the community engagement and involvement, we've asked Julie Bryant to join the board. So we'll be convening our first board meeting uh, next week at the BioIT World Meeting. Uh, and so we'll be in, in, instantiating a number of the key things that will uh, affect the, the, the full merger of the foundations. Next slide. 
I think the next slide is the leadership team. Ah, I got it right. Uh, uh, what we'll be doing is the leadership team will be uh, modified a bit uh, from an operational management perspective. Uh, I will stay on uh, for the time being. Uh, what we've done is change the roles to be more aligned with a, a nonprofit charity. Uh, so rather than being CEO, uh, I will be the executive director uh, of the of the I2B2 Transmart Foundation. Uh, Diane Keo is joining us uh, from the I2B2 Foundation uh, and will be our VP of Operations. Uh, Diane has previously been the, the CIO of Newton Mosley Hospital. Uh, she was also uh, the head of uh, research informatics at Partners Healthcare uh, and uh, uh, previously served as the, the, the managing director for uh, the I2B2 Foundation. Uh, Steve Johnson will re remain as our uh, VP of Finance uh, and Rudy uh, will, take, will continue to take on the VP of Marketing role. Uh, so these are sort of new titles, uh, but there are faces that you know and uh, know well, uh, and uh, you'll see Diane working quite a bit with us um, as she transitions into the VP of operations role. From a, a C-level perspective in terms of scientific leadership, these are volunteer positions, uh, but uh, both Brian Athey, who's been our CSO, and Ike Guo, who's been our uh, uh, CTO, will continue on with the foundation. Uh, and Sean Murphy will join us as uh, Chief Medical Officer and Paula Biak as Chief Information Officer. Uh, these are really key advisory roles that will not only advise the, the leadership team, uh, but will also advise the Board of Directors and the Project Management Committees. Next slide. Um, I think everyone has a good sense of project management committee, so I'll be brief here. Uh, but the project management committee for us, again, uh, we're following the very successful Apache Software Foundation model. Uh, a PMC is the governance body uh, for each project uh, that the, the foundation is involved in govern, governing. Uh, there, it's led by a chair. That chair reports directly to the board of directors on a regular basis. So uh, every quarter, uh, the chair of the PMC of each project will report to the board uh, on the, the current roadmap, the progress, uh, resource needs, requirements uh, for each of those projects. Uh, the members of the PMC uh, will be uh, contributing to those projects, managing those projects, and uh, not they won't just be uh, developers working on the projects, but they will also be other key contributors. And so that's a little bit of a, a, a an alteration, if you will, of the ASF model, but uh, we think it's really important to have other key contributors and, and uh, data uh, curation uh, efforts and others represented. So uh, these will be the ways that we continue to roll. Um, the chairs of the PMCs will also participate in every business advisory board meeting uh, so that they can have a, a strong interaction with the, with the corporate sponsors and partners uh, and, and be responsive to where these platforms need to go uh, based on the influence of our, of our partners. Um, I think we, we talked here a little bit about the, the, the primary roles, but uh, what the, the, role, the, P, the role of the PMC is to make sure that the project is, is moving forward uh, it has a plan, it meets its goals, it's on budget, at least with the, to the extent that uh, we have foundation resources in use. Uh, make sure that it meets foundation quality standards, it complies with our coding standards and our ethical standards uh, as set forth by the foundation. The foundation, I think one of our primary roles is to ensure that when a, a, a product uh, comes out with the foundation uh, brand on it, uh, that you know it's gone through an appropriate testing, uh, evaluation, auditing process. Uh, and that it complies with the standards that we put forward. Um, it also uh, meets all legal, moral, and ethical codes of the foundation, uh, and all the PMCs are supported by uh, the VP of Operations. Next slide. Okay, in terms of the, the, the project management committees, the PMCs that we're starting out with, uh, just to reiterate this, uh, we'll have the Transmart PMC, which has been running for uh, the past three years, uh, taking a Transmart through three major releases, four minor releases, and is currently running the 17.1 uh, release project. Uh, that'll be augmented by the I2B2 uh, PMC, uh, which is currently uh, running I2B2 at release 1.7. They have a release coming out at the end of the summer, which includes the OMOP uh, integration. Uh, there'll be a new I2B2 Transmart uh, PMC, uh, Paul will be leading this, and, and our hope is to take Paul's code base and, and further enhance that and, and to work together to make I2B2, Transmart, 
and ITV2 Transmart work in a, in a more unified way uh, so that they can continue to, to work well together. So you can run ITV2, you can run Transmart, or you can run ITV2 Transmart on the same environment uh, on the same data. And then finally, OpenBell, uh, which we're working with uh, to get running. Uh, we have, uh, I think, some key challenges here, but uh, we'll be reaching out to all of those those of you in the OpenBell community um, as we form this PMC over the next uh, few weeks. Next slide. Um, uh, I just thought I'd also mention to folks that uh, we are talking with a, a number of efforts about bringing additional capabilities into the foundation. Uh, these are just early discussions, um, but we're quite interested in, in seeing if we can make these happen. Uh, we're talking with the group with Common Workflow Language, we're talking with the group with Arvados. Um, I think these uh, you know, could be great additions to the, to the overall portfolio of the foundation, um, but something that we're, we're currently discussing. Next slide. I think, uh, as you know, Arbados was integrated into 17.1 uh, development, and one of the things we're looking for is, in fact, uh, ways to, to have a deeper and more functional integration uh, between Arbados, uh, Transmart, and I2B2 uh, in the coming future. The other key change is the partnership program. Uh, so the former sponsored membership program is being uh, morphed into a partnership program. Uh, the, partner the partnership program uh, has a number of, of partnership levels that you'll recognize from the membership program. Uh, each, each level has an increasing level of participation and sponsorship. Uh, it provides a means of collaborating between partners, among the foundation, uh, with the various projects. Uh, it opens channels to the extended I2B2 Transmart community uh, through the marketplace, through various marketing and advertising capabilities, uh, and through the partnership program you'll get discounted access to the various sponsorship programs and advertising programs that the foundation offers. Next slide. Uh, the, the key benefits of the foundation partnership, uh, I think, are, uh, are manifold. Uh, but in general, I think they provide, from our discussions with, with various uh, uh, members and partners, uh, is, is a key ability to come in and have their voice heard. Uh, I think as we go forward and directing this community and moving it forward, moving the products forward, we need to be connected to those that are using the products and using the platforms. Uh, so through the partnership program, you can support the efforts of the foundation uh, and you can participate uh, in discussions with the board. So uh, we have in-person board meetings uh, twice a year. Uh, for each of those, we will have uh, a board dinner and our, our platinum partners will be invited to attend those board dinners uh, when, when they're in town for those. Um, and uh, the business advisory board will meet twice a year, and that business advisory board will be chaired by one of our board members, and uh, will also be attended by our leadership team and by the project management committee chairs. And this will provide an opportunity for a strong collaboration and, and interaction between our partners uh, and the key leaders that, that uh, do the business of the foundation. Uh, we have the various foundation events and we see increasing the number of events with the, uh, the growth in the community. Um, and uh, partners will have annual meeting passes, they can attend invitation only events, uh, they can sponsor and participate in hackathons and datathons as we move those forward. I think another key benefit of partnership is, is the marketing capability we have a broad community and that community is growing uh, dramatically uh, and membership in, in I should say partnership in the in the foundation uh, will provide you discounts on sponsorships discounts on advertising uh, prominent placement uh, of the brand on foundation social networks our web uh, various monthly events etc and so we see really creating a number of opportunities for for your marketing budgets to really be used effectively to communicate communicate to the community and then finally, uh, you, can, you can sponsor various uh, foundation projects. Um, I think there are a number of groups that have come and approached me about building new open source software projects. Um, if a partner would like to sponsor uh, that kind of a program, we can put it in place, uh, provide the foundation resources to help manage and govern that, and ensure that those, those projects meet uh, foundation standards in terms of the, the products that they produce. Next slide. Uh, the partnership levels, uh, you should see them as very familiar. We have the, the gold and silver partnerships that we've had previously. We've added a, a platinum partner uh, to this as well, uh, as well as our academic affiliates. 
One thing that's new about the partner program uh, is we've had a lot of requests from companies to adjust the, the, the fee schedule based upon company size, and that's one of the key things that we're adding to this. So each partnership level has three categories uh, in terms of company size uh, with uh, an appropriate uh, and proportional fee structure. Uh, the key benefits you know, are listed here, um, interaction and, and with the board through board dinners, um, also the ability to make a presentation to the board on key strategic issues. Uh, a business advisory board, uh, so board seats and presentations to that board. Um, three C committees, of course. Uh, continued participation as we've had in the old program. Uh, also various uh, marketing and, and project sponsorships as we discussed. Next slide. Uh, I think that's it. That's the last one. Great. Yep. Okay. I have, I have I my old summary slide, which must not have got included. That's okay. It's actually at um, the end. You want to go to that? Oh, is that the, yeah. No, no, no. I, I can remember that one. Uh, so anyway, I, I think this is a this is a great opportunity, and I think uh, I hope that all of you in the community feel this. I, I know I've uh, had a lot of questions over the past uh, month or so about this, and how is the foundation going to change? And again, I think this is an opportunity for. Uh, a real synergistic combination of, of efforts and capabilities and uh, bringing I think I2B2 and Transmart back together you know where they started uh, and moving the community forward enhancing critical mass uh, and I have to say I'm just really excited about being able to work more closely with, with Sean and with Paul and with Diane uh, on advancing the, the goals of this community. Uh, I think this critical mass element is incredibly important, uh, and I really look forward to people participating and, and, uh, and helping us to, to grow and, and manage the, the foundation as we move it forward. If you do have any questions or any concerns, you know, please reach out to me. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, and uh, for people on the partnership program, over the next few weeks, we'll be reaching out to all of you uh, with details on the partnership program uh, and, uh, you know, can answer any questions for you at that time. And, and we'd love to get your input on, on how well these elements fit your needs. And as we have with a number of interviews that we've done so far, um, if there are things that we can change or modify in this partnership program, uh, now is the time to give us that input. Uh, we can bring that before the new board and we can make those adjustments to, to fit your particular needs. So again, I'm, I'm really excited about this. I think this is a fantastic step forward for the foundation. I want to thank the whole team for working together on this at the board level. Jim Serum chairing uh, the merger committee uh, for us did a, a fantastic job. Uh, Diane uh, from the ITB2 Foundation and the whole team from the Transmart Foundation working together. Uh, and specifically, I'd like to thank uh, our general counsel, uh, Jamie Katisha and Karen Coppenhaver from, uh, from Choke Partners and Linux Foundation uh, for really helping guide us through this process. This has been a fantastic uh, collaboration and I really look forward to great things. So with that, let me turn it over to you, Rudy. Okay, thanks, Keith. And we'll have time for questions at the end. Um, I'm just gonna take just a couple more minutes quickly to talk about, uh, first of all, the foundation of BioAT World. Um, we will be there next week. We have a booth. Uh, 232. I hope that's the right number. Uh, and the exhibit hours are, are shown there, so we'll be there. Um, we have worked hard to put together uh, a description of the new partnership program, the membership program, uh, the new foundation. So we'll have uh, a lot of that collateral with us um, at the exhibit booth uh, for us to, to talk about. And we will be having our community meeting, which we have been having for the last several years, on Wednesday evening. Uh, again, this year we're going to have it at the Seaport Hotel uh, in a new room, the Lighthouse Room, um, and we will have uh, drinks and food and uh, also a few presentations uh, to talk about some of the, the topics that, that Keith touched on and, and maybe a couple of others. Um, all of this is uh, is uh, listed uh, on the website as the as part of the uh, BioIT World uh, event. Uh, and uh, we do ask you, if you are, are coming uh, to the Wednesday evening meeting, please register um, it helps us just with the planning as uh, the main thing. But um, hopefully if you're in town for that, uh, we'd love to, to see you. So come by and um, we'll say hello. The other event that we've been working on for a while, uh, and I've been working in particular with uh, Diane Keogh to put together uh, is our foundation symposium uh, at uh, the Harvard Medical School as part of their precision medicine uh, activities. Um, we will be holding it again this year. We, we were there last year as well uh, individually. Um, it is taking place on uh, June 20th to 22nd. Um, for scheduling reasons, unfortunately, it's, uh, it's set up that the, the first day, June 20th, 
will be the first day of our symposium and then uh, the, the middle day, the Wednesday, um, the, Harvard will be having their Precision Medicine 2017 um, conference uh, in, in the, the same building, but in the larger auditorium. And then we will be back again together on the 22nd for the second day. Um, it's at the, all in the same building though. Uh, you, we are asking that you register separately for each, uh, each of these events. I can tell you that for our two days, we have already over 100 people uh, registered for this. Uh, we do have a, a limited um, size in there, but I think it's like around 170, so we're not in any jeopardy. But um, again, at the website, you can see all the information about it. We're also calling for uh, presentations and posters. So we do have some room on the agenda for some presentations. And we have a very uh, nice area for posters. And so again, on the website, you could submit um, a presentation or a poster uh, if you're interested in participating. A uh, quick agenda just to show you, you know, sort of what we're doing the first day is uh, a little more focused on night 2 b 2 although we will talk again about the new combined foundation. Um, and then on the second day, uh, talk about uh, a little bit more on the, the sort of the Transmart side. Um, but then the afternoon of the second day, on the, the Thursday afternoon, we will focus on the integration between I2B2 and Transmart, uh, both from a scientific uh, f uh, consideration uh, and also th um, starting to think about um, how technically these, you know, we will uh, start to, to look at moving ahead uh, maybe with a combined platform. So it uh, should be a, a very uh, interesting day. We're also setting up during lunches a number of breakout sessions uh, where we can have some short, small group discussions um, getting started. So uh, we're, we're very excited. This is our second time running this symposium, and uh, we, we think that uh, the, the first one was, was really uh, well attended, and we had a lot of good uh, interaction, and we're hoping to do the same thing again this year. And also, as Keith mentioned, we are in the process of uh, initiating the, the planning for our uh, now uh, I2B2 Transmart Foundation annual meeting. It will take place at uh, Imperial College uh, in uh, late October, or early November. We're just working on dates and rooms and things. So uh, we'll be having that uh, pulled together shortly. Uh, and then Diane is here on the phone also uh, on this call with us. So if we have any questions, uh, we can talk about it. But uh, just in summary, you know, as Keith said, we're, we're all very excited about the new foundation, uh, bringing uh, lots of opportunities, you know, for us. Um, we uh, have been working hard to pull the, the descriptions of all the, the programs together, uh, getting the PMCs again, moving ahead and um, really preparing for a very exciting um, future for this this new combined foundation, which uh, really offers a tremendous amount of opportunity, uh, we believe, for the the users of the platform and uh, the, the general you know the community at large. So, with that, I'm happy to open it up for questions. Um, if you have a question, you can raise your hand. You can type it in the chat window, uh, or you can type it in the question window. And so, if anyone has any questions, we'd be happy to uh, entertain them now. Hey, Rudy. Um, yeah. Just quickly, I, I was wondering if you want to, to unmute Paul and, and if he wants to say yeah. a few words, if sure. Diane wants to say a few words. Absolutely. Paul, you're unmuted. Say yes. anything. Thanks. Yeah, it's a, a very exciting time and to uh, finally see the, this merger of those two foundations and to, uh, to bring both communities into uh, the, the same direction. Uh, we are all very excited that this is now happening and uh, looking forward to all work together to, uh, to go into the, uh, in, the, uh, in enhancing uh, those platforms. Great, thank you. And Diane, I've unmuted you. Would you like to say a few words? I think she's speaking. Yeah. <laughs> and, and looking forward to see to see all of you in Boston for those three days, and the of uh, uh, for the three days of meeting I two B two Precision Medicine and I two B two Transmart uh, Foundation. Yeah, I'm I, I'm really excited about that, Paul. We had a great time last year, and I think this is really the inaugural event uh, for the I two B two Transmart Foundation. 
And uh, Rudy was telling me that we have already uh, well over 100 people registered yes, for this. Yes, right. Wow, uh, great. Which is exciting. You know, so it's, we're still a month away. I don't think we've ever had this level of registration for an event mm -hmm. you know, this early. So we're really yeah. excited about that, and, and I would encourage people uh, you know, to, to come, uh, to get involved. I think that you know, Zach's Precision Medicine Conference attracts over 600 people, uh, right. and the ITB2 Transmart around that, I think, is, is a great opportunity for us to, to get together and, and chart forward the, you know, the path. Okay, well, I don't see any questions yet or coming. So um, with that, I think we'll, we'll end. Uh, thanks everyone for staying staying here and uh, listening. Um, again, this is all being recorded. Maybe what, Let's go ahead. Maybe what's the deadline for the posters? Because uh, you mentioned quickly on the slide that there was a poster yeah. session. So what's the deadline to submit a poster? Um, I, yeah, the, the posters can be submitted up until a week before. So it's like June fifteenth would be the deadline. Right. Fantastic. The sooner the better, obviously. So, okay. Thank you, everybody. Um, again, the recordings will be available shortly, and um, we'll uh, hopefully we'll see you uh, either in Boston at either of the meetings uh, or in, uh, next month again. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>